Today we're going to talk about function and the graph. We wanted to mention a little bit about uh, definitions of the functions. So definitions of function is given a relationship of x and y where x is a function of, I mean y is function of x. If for each value of x in the domain, there is exactly one value of y in a range. In other words, all the x, you have to have exactly only one y. All the x have one y, or all the domain have one range. And some people might think that they don't know what domain and range, and this is the definition for it. So let's say we have order pair, right? If we have order pair first set of the order pair, we call the domain, which we're mentioning x here. Range is going to be the second element from the set. So in this case, if we have order pair, y is going to be range. And we are going to use the vertical line test to make sure that if given graph is going to be function or not. We use the vertical line to test the functions. And I'm going to show you with the example. So with the example, if we wanted to understand the definition of function a little bit better, we have a given uh, set of the number and we wanted to differentiate between the domain and range and look like our domain is going to be all the x right this is going to be all the domain so i'm going to write that down under the domain so three two negative four negative one and three that's another three right there and you don't want it to write the same number twice because we wanted to see how many um range we have for that one number right and then we're going to write the range the second element from the the order set is going to be range so it will be one five two zero negative four none of them are repeating and then the first set first order pair is giving three matches one so three corresponding one, two corresponding five, negative four corresponding two, negative one corresponding zero, and three corresponding negative four. So this shows that two, four, one will have only one y, but three, you have two y. From the definitions, if you have more than one range that's for one y, I mean one x, that's not going to be a function, right? So this one we will say not a function. So you have to have only uh, one range, one y in order to be a function. Let's look at the other one. So domain and range, domain is 1, 2, 3, range is 4, 5, 6. The first set say that 1 is corresponding 4, 2 is corresponding 5, 3 is corresponding 6. As you can see, 1 domain for 1 range one domain for one range. In this case, we will say yes functions. And this is one of the special functions. Uh, yes, function, and we call this one-to-one -one functions. because one domain for one range. Let's look at one more. What about you have negative one, two, three, negative four, and range is four, three, four, there is another four and five. 
and then negative 1 correspond 4, 2, 3, 3, 4, negative 4, 5. So this one, if you see, each, each domain have only one y. You are repeating y twice, but for negative 1, you have one y, uh, one range. Positive 3, you have one range. So long as you have one range or one y value, that's going to be function. So you will say this is yes functions. It's not going to be one to one functions because these two domain have the same range even though they have one. So it's not going to be one verse the other. One verse one, right? So it's not going to be one to one function, but still satisfy definition of functions because you have only one element for each domain, right? So that will be still functions. So maybe this will clarify it or uh, give you a better understanding of the functions. Now, once we understand what's function, let's look at the equation and see if we can tell given equation is functions. So the best way to do it is to plug in the point and see how many y you get. So you're going to replace x with one number and see what your y is going to be on this equations, right? So when x is 1, it will be 1 squared, still 1. Move to the other side, will be 4 minus 1, so you get 3. If x is negative 1, that will be, again, negative 1 squared is 1, 4 minus 1 will be 3. So you get the same 3, but you only get 1 y for each x, right? So this is going to be functions. What about this one? Uh, if you replace x with 1, well, let's try with 0 even. I mean, any number. Try any number, and I'm going to pick 0 because it's just easier. When you do x squared, 0, then you get y squared equals to 4 remains, where y is going to be plus minus 2, right? Because you need to use square roots. So if you plug in 0, you end up getting two solutions. You don't even have to try any other number because you know because you get two solutions, it's not going to be a function, right? So it will say not a function. The next one, try that again. x equals to 0, what happened? y, so this whole, this becomes 0, right? And y is equals to 6. It will be 6. One solution. Um, if, if you try negative or positive, it will be still same. So if you let x equals to 1, it will be 6 minus 2, so y will be 4. So you can kind of tell, no matter what number you plug in, you will get only one solution. So it will be a function. This one right here, if you let x equals to uh, 0, this is going to be y squared equals to 1. When you use the square root property, you need to put plus minus sign, so it gives you two solutions, right? So it's not going to be a function. And from looking at it, you can kind of tell if you have y itself, y with the odd exponent, y to the first, right? It become a function. When it become a not a function is when y is even power. y is even power. Why? In order to get rid of that even power, you're going to use the plus minus sign on the solutions. Or in that case, you end up getting uh, two solutions for that one x. So that's little uh, knowledge you're going to get once you start doing your homework. Another information maybe um, 
that I mentioned that remember we're going to use the vertical line test to find out if it's functional or not, right? So if we can tell if given equation shape of the graph, we can also um, see if it's a function or not. So for example, this one right here, I know this is a quadratic, right? We can rewrite this into y equals to negative x squared plus 4, right? And later on, we're going to learn how to graph this. But right now, going by word, my word, I know this graph will be look like upside down parabola. And if we draw a vertical line anywhere on that graph, and if it meets only one point, then it will be functions. So that's how you're going to use the vertical line test to see if graph is function or not. Um, this one right here on the second one, this is going to be circle, right? And again, we're going to go over circle. So um, once we go over circle, you're going to know why or how can you tell given equation is circle, right? Having a two both of x and y variable with square, that's going to be circle. So let's say if you draw the circle and draw the vertical line anywhere on your graph, and if it meets one time, then it's going to be a function. If it's not, it's not a function. You meet two points, that's how you know it's not a function. Right? This one, we already know. I mean, if you didn't know the other one, you will know this one. This is going to be linear, right? This is going to be linear equations. Uh, if you wanted to write it in the standard form, this is going to be y equals to negative 2x plus 6. So y intercept 6, slope is negative 2, so this is going to be the linear. It means it's going to be line, right? The line, straight line. If you have a straight line passing draw the vertical line anywhere on your graph if it's passing only one point we know that's functions right and same thing the last one we know that's circle right because you have a square square S uh, circle will be the same thing as this draw the vertical line it made more than one point so we know that's not uh, functions so there are several ways to tell given equation is functional or not Pick and choose whichever method you wanted to, you know, use. Here we have another one, and this one is just giving a graph. With the graph, we wanted to see if it's um, functional or not. So what do we need to do? Draw the vertical line anywhere. So if I draw a vertical line here, it meets two points. So we know it's not a function. What about B? Draw the vertical line anywhere. Anywhere, right? Anywhere, and if we meet one point, then functions. Here, draw the vertical line anywhere. So if I draw a vertical uh, line anywhere, it will be only one point, but if I draw a vertical line here, it will be two points, right? So it's not going to be a vertical line. I mean, uh, it's not going to be a function. Right. Now, the next example, we wanted to see if we can find domain and range from the graph. So if we're looking at this problems, it's the dot. All this dot it's given, it's not a line. In that case, if we wanted to find domain, your domain is going to be just the list of the dots so all the x value on the dots so the first point right here your x is going to be negative 3 this your x is going to be negative 1 this point right there x is 0 this point your x is 2 this point your x is 4 so it's not going to be range you know like uh, from where to where. It's going to be only point. 
your range is going to be the same thing. So if I start the same point here, your range, your y value on that point is going to be negative 4. y value in this point it will be positive 3. y range in this point will be 1. y on that point is going to be 4. And this is going to be another 4, right? And you don't need to write the same number twice. So that's how you're going to find domain and range of the points. If you need to find the domain range of the graph with the line, you need to see where it's starting. So the domain, it, it's moving right and left. So where is the end point? Where is the starting point? Where is the point it's all the way at the left? That's going to be all the way at the end. The left and which is going to be negative 3 but with the open circle means negative 3 is not included so you're going to use the parentheses two um, it's going from here and moving toward left right and you see this arrow having a uh, arrow going up not only up but then moving right so if you have a moving right arrow uh, domain is going to be going toward positive infinities. And then if we wanted to find the range, we need to find the graph that's the lowest point. Lowest points will be this point, right? This is the lowest point. So going up and down, lowest point is going to be negative 2. And open circle may not include negative 2. You have arrow going up, so it will be going into positive infinities. Let's look at upside down problem. Domain, um, I, I like to analyze my arrow first. So the, this arrow right here is not only going down, but also moving right slightly. This arrow right here is not only going down, but moving left slightly. So having a left arrow to the right arrow, left to right, I will have all the infinities. Range, I have going down arrow, so that will be negative infinity. So where will be the highest points? Your highest points is going to be right here, which is going to be 4. And you don't have any open circle. You have a line passing through that 4. So that 4 is included. So the 4 is included, you're going to use the bracket. Next example we're going to look at it is finding a domain from the equations. So when we're looking for domain of given function, we need to find the restriction first. If we can find the restrictions, all other number but that restriction is going to be your domain. So looking at this uh, fraction form fraction denominator cannot be equals to zero that's the restrictions so when you solve that restrictions you can get x cannot be equals to 5 over 2 so any number you can use for this functions except x being 5 over 2 so in order to write that into the domain interval notations so excluding 5 over 2 to negative infinity and uh, or 5 over 2 to positive infinity. If you wanted to see it into the graphing form, except 5 over 2, everything else, right? So that's how you're going to write your domain for the first one. For the second one, your domain, again, this is fraction, so denominator cannot be equals to 0. And look like this never going to be equals to 0 because x squared will be always positive number, right? So x squared will be always positive number, or if you're trying to solve it, you will get, what do you call, um, imaginary number. So you know that you're, you don't have any restrictions. 
So the domain of B, G of X, will be all real number. And all real number interval notation will be negative infinity to positive infinity. Let's look at the third one, square roots. Square roots do have restrictions. So square roots x have to be always greater than equals to zero because negative number inside of square roots makes it um, imaginary numbers, right? Not a real numbers. So using that, if we find restrictions, solve for t, uh, you're subtracting 2, divide by negative, so you need to flip it, right? So that will give you t have to be less than equals to 2. So your domain for that is less than 2, right? Equals 2. So you use the bracket. So that will be the domain for c. This is domain for B. This is domain for A. The last one, absolute value, right? This absolute value of 4 plus A. Absolute value, we do not have any restrictions. You can pick any number. You can make negative inside uh, absolute value still come up to be positive. So there is no restrictions to it. So your domain will be negative infinity to positive infinity only equation that we learned so far that have restriction is fractions and square roots. Fractions, you cannot have zero on denominator. Uh, square roots, you cannot have negative number inside. So that's, that's why you want it to set up as greater than equals to zero because you can have zero but, the, but not negative number. So next example, we wanted to make sure we know how to answer some of these questions or understanding what they're asking. So when I say determine what's f of 2, this means um, when your y is, when, when your x is equals to 2, what will be y? So when x is equals to 2, where is your y value at? in this given functions. So when x is 2, your y is that point which is 5, right? So this is asking you to find when x is 2, what will be y? So you will say f of 2 is equals to 5, or you can say uh, when x is 2, y is 5 right or 2 and 5 that's what you can answer that questions so the B will be the same thing when X is negative 5 Y will be Y your negative 5 your Y value is negative 3 right negative 3 but it's open circle it means there is nothing right so your solution should be there is no Y value because it was open circle so we could say y is empty, nothing. Not a zero, nothing. Or f of negative five is no value. And c is asking find all x for which f of x equals to zero. When f of x equals to 0 means when your y is equals to 0. This is looking for when y is equals to 0. So this means when y is equals to 0. Find all the x, right? So let's see, y is equals to 0. This is y equals to 0. All the x, but you have a 2, 2 points when at y is equals to 0. Negative 4 and positive 4. So just giving a two points, you need to use the braces, right? So you're going to say x is negative 4 and positive 4, just two points. What about the next one? You say um, find the x-intercept. x-intercept is when graph is passing x-axis. 
that's going to be when y equals to 0. So again, that will be this 2. So that's going to be, uh, let me write it, so it will be x equals to 0, y is negative 4, x equals to, I mean y equals to 0, uh, oh, the other way around, right? Hold on. Let me erase that. Your x value is negative 4, so it will be negative 4y is 0, and positive 4y is 0. And look like I missed the problem because I wrote my solutions on the wrong place, right? So let me write this one, and then erase the other one, so I will have space for that solutions. And the D was asking, find all x for which f of x equals to 3. So find when y is equals to 3. Find all the x when y is equals to 3. y equals to 3 is here. So this line. And it's giving you uh, from where to where. The, the, not the point, it's giving you the line. So you will say, uh, from x negative 3 all the way to 1, your y is all 3, right? So the way you're going to write that, it will be including negative 3 uh, from 2, positive 1, starting from those, including those points, right? So use the bracket between negative 3 to 1, 3 to 1. This is all y is 3, right? And let's look at the next one, y-intercept. Y-intercept is when your graph is passing y-axis, and this is only points that you see that. And if you write that in your y-intercept, it will be x0, your y is 3. Um, they're asking you to find the domain on G. Domain is going to be going uh, left to right, and I only see one arrow, which is going down and right. So by that arrow, direction of that arrow, I will have domain all the way to positive infinity because I do have right arrow. So then I need to see the points that's all the way to left is going to be here, which is negative 5. And because open circle, that's not included. 5, I said, right? Yep, so that's your domain. Your range is going to be going up and down, and I have an arrow going down, so to negative infinity. And highest points is this point on your graph, what's your y value is going to be 5. And it's passing through 5, no open circle, so 5 is going to be included. So that's going to be your domain. The next example in this section, we will look at the evaluating. So evaluating is just replacing the number. So if we have g of x equals to 2x plus 1, they want you to find g of negative 2. It means find y value when x is equals to negative 2, right? So we could do g of negative 2 is replacing all the x with negative 2. So that will give you negative 4 plus 1, which is negative 3, right? So that's what you're doing. I mean, I'm going to do one more even though we have three because not bad, right? Not too hard. So when you replace it, it's going to be uh, negative one instead of x. So you get negative two plus one, which is going to be negative one. So that's what it means when it say evaluate. So if we're looking at number 8, evaluating, we do the same thing. But this one, let me try B. Because B, I mean A, you're going to replace all the X with A. So instead of X, you're going to get A. So not much different. If I try B, 
add of x plus h, it means all the x you're going to replace with x plus h. That's not bad, um, but you need to make sure you simplify your solutions. So a little more work involved on this one. You do the uh, uh, square. Square means you need to do foiling because this addition you cannot distribute. So when you foil that, you get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared is what you get. And when you distribute 2, you get 2x plus 2h. Distribute 3 to open the first parenthesis. 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared. And see if you have any like terms you can combine. It look like not, right? So that's going to be it for that problem. But then when we're looking at C, what they want you to do is whatever you have for f of x plus h, that's what we found, just found, right? That's the number. We wanted to subtract f of x from it. What's f of x? That was the uh, given. That was the given functions. And then divide that by h. Let's see if we can do that. So f of x plus h is this. So copy that down. And then subtract f of x. So when you subtract f of x, this is what you get. divide by h. It means you need to open the parenthesis by distributing negative. So you end up getting negative 3x squared, negative 2x all over h. And see if we can get rid of the commons with or opposite, right? So this is positive 3 negative 3 cancels out, negative 2x, oh, that was um, positive, right? That was positive right here, so that will cancel out the negative 2x. Look like what's left over is 6xh plus 3h squared plus 2h over h. Where on the numerator, common factor is h, when, where you can factor it out, you have 6x plus 3h plus 2 remains all over h, and look like this h and h cancels out. You end up getting only 6x plus 3h plus 2 remains for that, right? So this is what they want you to do when they're asking you to do f of x plus h minus f of x. So if just find what this is, like we did it in b, and then subtract f of x, divide by h. After that, all we need to do is simplify. So last example we're going to do from this section is to uh, related to functions, right? Um, let's see if we can answer all these questions. So first one is asking to find the domain from the given. And I did mention if we wanted to find the domain from the fraction form, find the restriction first, right? Restriction is x cannot be equals to x plus 2, which is denominator cannot be equals to 0. So x cannot be equals to negative 2. It means your domain is going to be all real number but negative 2. All real number but negative 2. And this is how you write with the interval notations. And then B is asking if 1 and half for y is on the graph of the given f of x functions, right? So how can we tell if this point is one of the solution points of the given functions? Well, we just replace it. What we have is y equals to x plus 1 over x plus 2. So function notations can be replaced with y variable. And if we replace x 
and y and if this is equals to it means this is going to be given point is um, solution one of the solution so uh, let's see this is two right so let's replace it so one is going to be one I mean x it will be one and see if this is going to be one half right y is one half this value and this is going to be two over three and if you reduce you cannot reduce this is not same as y which is one half so answer is going to be no the given point it's not on the graph of f of x okay and next question is asking when x is two what will be f of x right um, it means when x is 2, find y value on these functions, right? So we will just replace x equals to 2. Uh, see what your y value is going to be. That will be 3 over 4. So your y, which is f of x, is going to be 3 over 4. So when x is 2, y will be 3 over 4. That will be the order pair when x is 2. On this one, the next one, um, this is asking, you, do you see the difference? x equals to 2 means your x is 2, find the y. Here, f of x equals to 2 means your y is 2, find x. So this means y equal 2, find x. Uh, your function is y equals to x plus 1 over x plus 2. So when you replace y with 2, solve for x, right? So you're going to multiply both sides by x plus 2 to get rid of the fractions. You get 2 times x plus 2 equal x plus 1. Open the parentheses. And combine the like term so it will be 2x minus x 1 minus 3, uh, 4 so that gives you x equals 2 negative 3 so when y is 2 x will be negative 3 that will be order pair for that problem what about e it's a what are the x-intercept so find the x-intercept right find the x-intercept how do we find x-intercept? You're going to let y equals to 0. So x plus 1 over x plus 2 equals to 0. And that's how you're going to find your y, I mean x-intercept. x-intercept, y have to be equals to 0. So when you multiply both sides by x plus 2 to get rid of the fraction, you have x plus 1 equals 0. 0 time any number is just 0, right? And so for x, you subtract both sides by 1. So you get um, negative 1 for x. So x-intercept is when y equals to 0, x is negative 1. So order pair will be negative 1 and 0. That will be your x-intercept.